Hello geometry folks and welcome to surface area and volume of spheres. We're going to take a look at the last thing um, for this chapter and you need your flip charts, your pencil and a calculator and we'll go ahead and begin filling out um, the last section of our flip chart. We'll be taking some notes on surface area and volume. So first let's just talk about what a sphere is and that you can find the radius of a sphere. Just like you can find the radius of a circle, you can find the radius of a sphere. Now when I'm thinking of a sphere, I'm thinking of a 3D object, like a basketball, okay, or the Earth. So if I wanted to find the radius, the radius is where the center of the sphere, so inside, deep down inside in the Earth, and then it goes all the way to the outer part of the the sphere okay so the radius is inside the sphere so we say all right if we cut the sphere right down the middle you would know that that would create two halves and most of you know that those would be called hemispheres when you were um, studying the globe you learned that the equator cuts the globe into e two equal halves, the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. So if you want to think of it in that terms. If you look at the cross-section formed when you cut the sphere in half, so if I cut the globe in half or if I cut a ball in half, a basketball in half, you were looking at the, the cross-section, you would notice that the shape is actually a circle. It's actually called the great circle of the sphere. So the surface area of the sphere, let's go ahead and make sure that we write this surface area formula down, is 4 pi r squared. The only thing you need to know is the radius. Okay, so surface area is 4 pi r squared. Okay, so surface area of a sphere, let's try one out here. We have a radius of 8 inches. So we would use the formula 4 pi r squared, and we would plug in the 8 for r. And then we would, in our calculator, we would type in 4 pi 8 squared, and you would get 804.25 inches squared. Okay, that's one good example to have in your notes. Another example would be, what if I am telling you the circumference of the great circle of the sphere is 25 inches around? So say all the way around this is 25 inches. Now we don't have a radius, but we have a circumference. So maybe we would use the formula for circumference, which is 2 pi r. We would plug the 25 in for the circumference, and then we would solve for r. Now how do we solve for r? We would divide both sides by 2 pi. Now when you do that, make sure that you put the denominator 2 pi in parentheses. So when you do that, 25 divided by 2 pi, you will get 3.979. Now that I have a radius, I can go ahead and plug that into my surface area formula, which is 4 pi r squared. So now I'm going to plug in the radius that I found, 3.979 squared, times 4 pi into my calculator, and I will get a surface area of 198.96 inches squared. Now remember, the radius isn't in inches because we knew that the circumference was 25 inches. All right, so that's a couple examples of finding surface area. Let's go ahead and use the surface area to help us find the radius of a sphere. So if I have the surface area is 804.25 and I would say that's inches squared because that surface area is squared and I want to find the radius, I would go ahead and plug in 8 point, or 804.25 in for the surface area and I would solve for the r squared. So in order for me to get r squared alone, I'm going to divide by 4 pi because the pi's and the 4's cancel. And again, if I put 804.25 into my calculator, make sure that I divide the 4 pi 
in parentheses because remember your calculator is kind of tricky that way sometimes. So we will then get 64 equals r squared. And then how do I solve for r? The opposite of squaring is square rooting. And so r would equal 8. Now really r would equal plus or minus 8, right? But can we have a negative inch? No, we're not going to have negative inches. So our radius would be 8 inches, the positive. Okay? Now let's go ahead and write down what volume of a sphere is. The volume of a sphere is 4 pi r cubed, so the radius cubed, divided by 3. Now you could also, you might also see the formula written 4 thirds pi r cubed, okay? Either one, this means the same thing. All right, so let's go ahead and do an example of volume now that you have this formula written down in your notes. So what is the volume of the sphere? Round it to the nearest hundredth if the radius is two centimeters. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug two in for r. Again, volume, all it needs is r as well but this time we cube it. So it'd be 4 thirds pi times 2 cubed. 4 thirds pi times 2 cubed in my calculator, and I get 33.51 centimeters cubed. Now let's see if we can find the radius given the volume. So if I have the volume and I want to find the radius, the volume is 33.51 centimeters cubed. I'm going to go ahead and plug that into my volume for V. And then I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. Because dividing by 3, the opposite is multiplying, so they will cancel. And I'll get 100.53 equals 4 pi r cubed. And I'm going to divide both sides by 4 pi, okay? And when I divide both sides by 4 pi, I get 8 equals r cubed. And now I'm going to take the cube root of both sides. Now, in your calculator, you're looking for maybe an x and a root button or um, it could be x, a root button, y. There's all different sort of keys that would be used here. So if you need help with that, make sure that you ask me tomorrow on how you use your calculator to take the cube root. The cube root of r cubed would um, give you r, and the cube root of 8 is 2. So this would be 2 centimeters would be the radius. Okay, that's all that I have for you today, folks. Um, thank you for taking good notes, and we will be back to practice this tomorrow.